everyone. Welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast. This is episode three of our new season. Uh, yeah. How's it going? To my left, your guys is right. We have uh, in the foreground here, Mr. Eric Moore, our co-host. Hello. And then directly dead center on our fancy dancy old school, really old school LCD TV. Uh, we got Mr. HMK bouncing his head back there. Is this is this is this where I talk? <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. <laughs> What's up, guys? I'm HMK, and I'm glad to be back on the new rejuvenated Nintendo Prime podcast. And uh, yeah, I'm glad to be here. I'm ready to get into the noise. You know, you saw the set. What are you thinking? You you, you like this set? Oh the man, fly. I love it, bro. And when I saw uh, when he invited me into the call, and the set just went up like whoosh, I'm like, bro, that is nice. I bro, I love it. Yeah, it was a lot of planning for me to like, like get it working. Oh, yeah. We used to have like lights behind the tv but then like that wasn't working on camera and like you know what this looks fly as hell so i'm gonna go with it nice (laughs) um all right so guys uh we're gonna be talking a lot about switch pro it's kind of the theme of this episode i realize there's been like nothing but switch pro videos on my channel like every day so i get it i'm gonna try to shut up a lot besides providing context (laughs) because i have said a lot about switch pro over the last week we also might dive a little bit into the microsoft bethesda acquisition now that's finalized and some stuff that phil spencer said about it uh which should have been all too obvious uh and yeah that's that's pretty much the theme of it we'll see if we rattle off in other topics as it goes uh so let's just start with I guess the thing that really got the ball rolling over the last week, which is probably that report from Bloomberg uh, by uh, Machizuki uh, Takahashi, he is he used to work at Wall Street Journal. Now he works at Bloomberg. Uh, he has factual sources inside the manufacturing lines. Uh, I think he actually works out of Japan. He uh, provided some information just like he did back for the Switch Lite, and he's actually been teasing Switch Pro screen info specifically for a couple years now um that nintendo's been trying to get some stuff in there like nintendo technically had a contract with inoled displays apparently they didn't go in that direction because they're according to him now they're going with samsung now uh they did technically we know this you can actually look this up nintendo did open a new manufacturing line at a samsung factory so that you know didn't know if it meant anything at the time because obviously they were struggling uh, in China to get switches made during the pandemic. So, okay, they're just doing more production outside of China. You know, Should you really read much into it? Well, it turns out that according to Machizuki, they have a contract in place with Samsung to produce new screens for a new switch. The screens will be 720p still, which I know some people aren't too happy about that. Uh, but they're going to be OLED displays rigid oled to be exact uh to explain the difference there there's flexible oled that's what a lot of phones use when they use oled a lot of tvs use it as well it's a lot more conformative and easy to shape easy to produce but also more expensive uh rigid displays are yeah they're rigid they're hard you can crack them um but they're just as good as the flexible displays in terms of the color accuracy the contrast the you know the nits and all that jazz uh so there's not really any downside to it other than technically you could break it in half but if you're breaking your switch in half i think you have other problems (laughs) (laughs) wrong there so uh that being said uh they're using rigid displays apparently just because samsung has a bunch of them laying around because people moved on to the different the, the flexible display technology so probably got it as a cheap contract according to him uh he said it will uh have a seven inch display So if you look at kind of like the the switch we got here on the desk, um, it's like eliminating the bezel on the switch is roughly what the seven inches would be. Uh, And then you, they're going to, uh, what was it? They're going to have 4K output, I think he said, something like that when it's docked, Uh, which there's been a lot of rumors about 4K and DLSS with the Switch Pro from multiple sources. Uh, So that's something that he confirmed again, will have 4K output uh, when docked. And then... Yeah, it's supposedly coming this year. According to his sources, the plan right now is to release it this year. So let's just start there because that's where everything kind of snowballs from there. All the other information from other sources began really with Bloomberg blowing the top off this. And of course, when did they do it? But on the fourth anniversary of Nintendo Switch. <laughs> it's like it's like they've been sitting on it waiting for that anniversary <laughs> to drop the info. Um, probably it had to be intentional oh, for sure um, so what are you guys thoughts just on that aspect before we get into some other stuff that's come out since then like you know OLED 
but only 720, but it's a bigger screen and 4K. What the hell? So uh, let me get let me get things started off the bat. You know, I've seen a lot of people complain about the OLED uh, screen. You know, only 720p, 720p in my hands and stuff. And I'm like, you know, considering that I've seen a lot of reports about how you know you're supposed to use the switch in handheld mode and stuff i don't really think that's big of a deal because i mean of course people want to off the bat they want uh you know bigger better you know why can't it be 1080p why can't it be beyond this you know in the in the palm of your hands there's other you know like phones tablets are able to achieve 1080p in your hands and then at the point you know the point of contention is that you know do you really need 1080p in your hands in my opinion i don't really think you do especially if you're holding your switch as you're supposed to be holding like probably at arm's length and stuff you know, the human eye can only process uh, the amount of pixels needed uh, for it to look nice in the palm of your hands. And the fact that it's going from, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like 6.6 inches to 7 inches uh, for the Switch and then this supposed re- revision. It's 5.5 uh, really for, yeah, for Switch Lite. I think it's like 6.1, 6.2, I think right now. Uh, right. On the re- regular, it's something like that. Um, so yeah, 7 inches, I mean, it, it does look bigger. Like I said, you get rid of right. the bezel. That's basically the size of the screen, if you measure yeah. it, measure it diagonally. So well, you know, all, all things considered, it's going to be a leap from what we know the switch currently in when you're not using a light, you know. But you know, using it in the palm of your hand, 720p, I still think it's not some sort of deal breaker or something that people should look at as like, oh, they're doing the same thing again, but just a bigger screen. It's not going to look as well, you know. Like literally, this 720p is in the palm of your hand. You know, we used to have seven, like 720p. Uh, TVs that were, you know, about like, you know, 24, 25 inches and stuff. And then we jumped from 1080p. Then we tried to do the jump to 3D and then we did the jump uh, to 4K eventually. And then spinning off that point, you know, um, with with the Switch Pro, I don't want to call it a Pro. This is like a revision. Maybe it's going to be called a Pro, whatever. It going into 4K being docked uh, is not something that I feel that people should really think it's like, you know, they, there's two lines of thinking that I've seen very common on the internet where it's like, oh, this Switch putting out 4K is going to look amazing. And it's the next step. And Nintendo always had to do this step, you know, in order to compete with, you know, the PS4 Pro or the PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, Xbox uh, One X, whatever. And that was the necessary leap in order for them to compete with those type of consoles. And then there are people that are saying that, like, oh, the, a, a Switch-like console being able to, you know, produce 4K uh, on a screen, you know, that seems out of like out of the question. I don't think it's possible. And those two lines of thinking, I think, is like born from the notion that people really think that uh, if the Switch is going to be capable of 4K in docked mode, they're going to see some sort of insane leap in graphical capability of what these games are going to be crafted as from developers. And I honestly don't think that. I feel like, you know, just because you hear 4K, 4K is a huge buzzword these days, is that, you know, oh, it must be like, oh, I could have to see all the pores on Link's skin, or I see all of the hairs coming out of Mario's forearm or whatever. I don't think that. I just think, you know, we're going to get a smoother, more powerful experience from these games that we've seen, you know, clock at around 900p, like Breath of the Wild. And uh, that struggle at, you know, 30 frames per second, especially when you go to areas like the Korok Forest, we're going to have a switch that's capable of, like, probably maybe running that at 60 frames and then smoothing out retroactively these games to, fork, to you know, upscaling them to 4K, like, smoothness or quality or whatever you want to call it. And I feel that, you know, a lot of people are just getting it way out of context of what they expect this console is going to like in 4k at least is going to be able to produce i think it's going to be a leap i think it's going to be the next step of what nintendo wants to for, uh, switch to be but i think people are just really you know like thinking that step is going to be huge when it's going to be big and people are going to think of it's huge i think it's going to be big but people think it's going to be huge and i don't think it's going to be huge and that's my take on the whole screen and 4k nonsense yeah so i think a realistic expectation like the 720p screen to me you have to remember, folks, that most games, AAA-wise, Nintendo or third-party, not indie, but AAA-wise, don't actually run at 720p on the Switch right now in handheld. They run at 540p, 360p. We've seen some go as low as 240p. So being able to just have the power inside to hit a native 720 is already going to look better than the current Switch without 
the resolution bump because what's more important is hitting the native resolution. If you increase that native resolution to 1080p, you're asking the Switch to do more in handheld, which I think is probably unrealistic for battery life alone. Um, remember, this is a gaming machine. If you ever take like a, a bigger game on your phone, okay, and you are playing, say, Fortnite or, or PUBG, I guess, since Fortnite's like having issues on phones right now with lawsuits and stuff. But say like you're playing PUBG or Call of Duty Mobile or whatever on your phone, if you play it for like an hour, your phone dies. Okay? They don't want to switch to die after an hour of being used in handheld. Mm-hmm. So right. they have a lot of consideration to consider a power draw, not just power draw of having to power a 1080p screen, but then having to possibly increase the clock speeds on the whatever chip they end up using um, to hit native 1080p in the games, or we're just going to be stuck in the same situation we are now where nothing runs at the native screen setting and it looks bad again. I think it's more important we hit native 720p than worry about running lower uh, resolutions on a higher resolution screen. So there's that part. For 4K, I mean, it's all about DLSS to me. If those rumors on DLSS are true, there's separate RT cores you add to the chip that upscales for you. Now, Eric, what are your thoughts on like the 720p panel or any of this stuff? Um, I mean, it'd be nice to have quote unquote 4K, but like you said, if the game's not going to take advantage of it, what's the? I mean, that's just going to cost more to put that in there. If nobody's going to take part in it, what's the point? You know, and you got to have the power, like you said, you got to have the power to do it. It's, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it, I, I have a feeling that it's going to be more pricey to go that route than maybe even a 1080p, 720p route and, you know, have the power to push all games to that, that native screen resolution. Well, so when people look at what, what the Switch Pro can be, I think a good a good example to look at is the new 3DS. The new 3DS, I know people think it was a minor upgrade. It, like, doubled or tripled the CPU power of the original 3DS. It added significantly more RAM. It didn't touch the GPU, but what we saw were games like, it, you know, I'm sure HFK probably remembers, like Hyrule Warriors Legends on 3DS, ran at almost... Oh, man. Don't even remind me. Like, on new 3DS, like, it, it actually technically ran at a better frame rate than the Wii U original release. Crazy. I don't know how, how that happened, because the Wii U is more powerful, but it just did. Um, probably because it runs at a much lower resolution, of course. And then the OG 3DS version of it, I mean single-digit frames. It ba- they, I don't even know why they bothered with it. And when they ended up doing the... What was it? The... Uh, they had another Warriors game come out, Fire Emblem Warriors or something. Fire Emblem Warriors, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they had that come out on 3D. They didn't even release it on the OG 3DS after how shit Hyrule Warriors Legends ran out. Man, it just... like, I, I dare you guys to try and run that game on the on an OG 3DS, man. I swear to when I tried it the first time, I felt smoke coming out of it, man. Like, uh-uh, nah, yeah. this, can't, this ain't it. So we have to look at realistic, for me, with Switch Pro, and you just talked about the Bloomberg, and even when you bring in some of the other information we're going to bring in here in a bit, is... This you don't look at this to be like a next gen experience. We have heard from people like Imran Khan, who uh, ironically he used to actually work under me at Zelda Informer, but then he somehow became a big wig writer. Good for him um, at Game Informer and some and Kotaku and some other outlets. Um, and so he's got he's got some insider sources, and he's been like, "Hey, look, like if people are expecting this to be you know a PlayStation Four Pro, it's not going to be that. But if you expect resolution and frame rate bumps, that's what you should be looking for, and that's important mm-hmm. because, as you said, Breath of the Wild, sixty FPS, that's huge. Like, oh, definitely, right? That's huge. Being able to run Breath of the Wild at a higher resolution and also hit sixty FPS, it doesn't have to have a big graphical bump. It, just look at Breath of the Wild running, you know, at four K sixty on PC without any other graphical changes. It looks phenomenal and it plays so smooth. Like that's what you need to look at. Cur- hit the current games that are on Switch today, actually run them at the native resolutions the system's capable of, mm-hmm. but then bump the frame rate up. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what we're talking about. Now, are some third-party games not going to do that? Like, say they decide they're finally going to bring a Call of Duty over. Are they going to say, screw it, we're chopping at the 30 FPS so we can have prettier visuals? Yeah, that could be a choice they make. But that's not to, that's not to say that there is going to be a massive um, power boost that's going to make you feel like, 
oh, this game looks so significantly better than it did on the old Switch. It does from a frame rate perspective. It does from a resolution perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think that is a massive deal because the current Switch shows its age. You know, we just got Apex Legends out on it. Runs fine. It runs what you expect. It's it's pretty much a lock 30 FPS. It stays at it pretty consistently. And yeah, it's blurry. That's typical. It doesn't run anywhere close Mm -hmm. to native resolution. So imagine the Apex Legends on Switch Pro can run at 60 FPS and native resolution. Is that not a big deal? Right. That's an extremely huge deal. You know, because I feel that the point is being missed uh, again once only because of the buzzword of, you know, 4K. Mm -hmm. And that's one question I want to pose to you guys after I get through my thought is that, you know, for me, like everything you're saying is like, that's what matters most to me as a gamer. You know, people say 4K resolution, 4K this, 4K that. I'm like, bro, if I can get Breath of the Wild, like even if it doesn't reach 1080p, even if it sticks at 90, uh, 90, 900, uh, 900 P, you know, if it runs at 60 frames, that's a win for me. That's that's gigantic for me. Because, I mean, like, you know, uh, a lot of games on the Switch, you know, with the, whole, with the entirety of Nintendo's bag and stuff, you know, they don't really want – they don't focus on the whole photorealistic graphical type yeah. deal. They uh, opt for more associated, more, you know, unique, quirky type of game styles and art styles and stuff that really – become timeless like over time such as breath of the wild if you look back wind waker especially how good wind waker hd looked on the wii u whatnot they opt from those styles that are truly timeless and then seeing those styles like run better and stuff like i really don't need to see every follicle on link's Hmm. forehead you know like everyone's like oh yeah 4k photorealistic is you know is the wave you know that thing gets that shit gets outdated like it's super fast because of this like stupid ass arms race that all these other developers are trying to do in order to make their console like you know achieve the greater graphics and stuff I'm like bro if you make a beautiful game out like outside of the need to create something that looks just like in real life i mean i'm, I'm escaping real life in order to play games you know yeah. so i don't really need to see that kind of noise if you're going to achieve that in uh, like a huge graphical step up that caps at 1080 but has 60 frames per second locked in uh, then i'm a happy camper and, you know, that's the question I want to pose to you guys is that do you feel that, you know, like with this apparent, you know, like, oh, it's going to achieve 4K, but is it though? Do you think that they're just, you know, attaching this or, or are going to atta- attach this word to the pro in order to drive sales for those people who are like, oh, yeah, so- 4K, haha, the best and whatnot. And then, you know, at the end of the day, you know, probably like a handful of games by the time of the Switch's four remaining years of lifespan, they're only going to have like, you know, this many uh, 4K re- uh, games that are going to be, you know, kind of on the one hand. What do you guys think about that? Well, okay, so my thought is, because since there's been so many other people say that, hey, this thing's going to have DLSS, my thing is, we got to remember, we have a new president, okay? We don't we don't have Iwata anymore. We don't have Kimishima. You know, rest in peace, Iwata. Great guy. But we have Furukawa, who recently came out and said, dude, every year's a do or die we want to avoid the cliff that Nintendo keeps falling off of every single time we have a major success. We hit a point, we crash, and then we have to come up with something new and pray to God that it works again. He doesn't want right. to go down that cycle that he's seen happen in his like 20-something years at Nintendo. Because mm-hmm. people forget, Furukawa has been with Nintendo a long time. He's just been on the business side where he's seen the finances. He's seen what happens when Nintendo crashes, and he's like, that's just not like a long-term plan for success, even though it's worked to this point, what happens if you have multiple Wii U like failures in a row? That's Oof. not, that's not going to fly, you know, like, yeah, they're fine. They have the money in the right. bank. It's not like they're going to go to business, but it's like, they might go to the console business. And so they want to, he's looking at it as, okay, if I look at every year is we need to kill it every single year. And yes, I know people can argue the game release last year. site so didn't kill it. It killed it at the sales charts. That's all Nintendo cares about. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can say they relied on ports and animal cross. That's fine, but they killed it on the sales charts. So mm-hmm. yeah, they, that's a, that's a win for Furukawa. He doesn't care how they did it. He cares that they did it. Um, yep. So y- you look at it from that new perspective, Nintendo at the time, when they came out with Nintendo Wii, HD TVs were starting to become a thing, but they weren't in every home, right? So their idea was, let's release a budget console that doesn't target HD, that we could release it cheaper than the competition, and you know do the, the unique motion controls. And they kind of bet on the fact that people aren't going to care about HD right away. And they didn't. 
and the Wii flew off shelves. It got to a point where HD started mattering more, and then we started seeing PS3 and Xbox 360 sell more and more and more as people got as HD TV rates became normalized. And I think one thing to consider why Nintendo would even mention the words 4K, if they even mention it, it might just have it and they might not even talk about it. But if they mention it, it has to be because you can't go to a local store and buy a 1080p TV at anything that's over 24 inches. It's all 4K everywhere for like 200 bucks. You can get a 32-inch 4K TV for $200 right now at Walmart. I literally saw it the other day. You can walk in and buy it right now. So mm-hmm. Nintendo probably recognizes that right now, anytime someone buys a new TV, it's 4K. Mm-hmm. It's just going to be. Whether it's a really, really nice 4K, you know, like, I think to get the best of the best out of the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, you have to spend, like, 3000 bucks to get, like, everything. The 120 FPS, the perfect HDR, the perfect uh, variable refresh rate and all that. Like, it's really expensive to really take full advantage of those systems. But most people will take advantage of just the pure 4K60 ability because even the cheap TVs have that. So to me, and the only reason Nintendo might mention it is, hey, look, if they go with DLSS, DLSS doesn't affect the actual GPU that's producing the graphics. All it basically is is separate cores that are added to the chip in anything that is um, not not Tegra X1 level, but anything that's... Uh, God, not Ampere. Ampere is their latest uh, gen. Whatever the gen was before, the, the, the 2000 series cards on computers. Um, so those <laughs> those two gens, I keep forgetting. DL, there's DLSS 1.0 all the way up to 1.9 and then DLSS 2.0. Whatever they, whichever they go with, if they go with any of that stuff, and it has DLSS, it doesn't affect the graphical capabilities of the GPU. Well, all it does is upscale, and upscale in a way that's wonderful. You guys want examples? Go on YouTube right now. Look up 1080p, even 720p if you want, DLSS upscale for control to 4K. And just look at that versus raw 4K. And tell me that your naked eye can really see much of a difference. You probably can't. That's the whole point of DLSS. It it makes it so if Nintendo's paying attention, and this is a different president that might be like, hey, look, maybe our issue with Wii is we were way too slow to get into the HD TVs once they became out. Maybe we should have did a Wii HD if I was in con- if he was in control instead of waiting and doing the Wii U. So maybe he's like, look, if we can get a Switch out there that has the ability to cleanly upscale, we're still outputting no more than 1080p. That's still our target in dock mode is 1080p native. But if we have DLSS that can make it look good on a 4K TV, that's all he cares about. Make it look good good on a 4k tv it doesn't need to be native 4k like the other consoles are trying to hit this is not a playstation 5 they're not pretending it's a playstation 5 but they want to take mario odyssey and make it look crisp on your 4k tv mm-hmm. without needing the necessarily the power to do it natively that's what i think nintendo's possibly looking at here and we got to remember, they are partnered with nvidia the company that pioneered this technology now this technology is coming to the AMD side as well and to PlayStation 5 and Series X, and it'll be interesting to see how it works on that end, but NVIDIA's been messing with this stuff for five years. So that, I think, is more the spin. It's not so much Nintendo trying to say, come get your 4K game in here. It's more like, dude, if you happen to hook this up to a 4K TV, hey, it don't look, work. It, it don't look blurry on your 65-inch 4K anymore. Right. We took care of it. No. That's their goal. Like It's not to make you have all these impressive visuals it's like dude breath of the wild already looks gorgeous now imagine it's not blurry on your 65 inch 4k tv okay then that's a big deal and i think that's what they're going for is just to uh, more so not for the high-end tvs but since all the low ends 4k as well we just want it to look good on 4k without having to have the power to do native and i think that's what we're looking at here now eric i'm very curious on your thoughts um because you know i don't know if you even mess with 4k tvs at your house or anything like that um so I, you you did have a really nice tv at one point but that was a while ago probably before, that, that was, wasn't 4k blasted by lightning i'm yeah pissed yeah so my nice plasma tv oh, that sucks and, and man, uh, you guys remember plasma yeah that when that was a big deal uh, uh, yeah he had one of those really nice plasmas beautiful yeah, yeah that was dude, i remember watching lightning. sports on that thing i was like dude this thing yeah, is the right? this thing is the shit there but, is absolutely no motion drag on that thing anywhere 
Well, now there's but, nothing on it anywhere. Well, yes, now there's <laughs> nothing on it anywhere. But um, so, like, what are your thoughts on this? Like, do you think Nintendo is actually going to do something nice to make it run at 4K, but like, still, it's not really adding power to the system to do it? Right. In, in docked mode, I would expect something done. Handheld, you know, I'm per- personally myself, I'm okay with the screen the way it is now. I mean, it doesn't bother me that it's in. It still looks beautiful to me. Yeah. I think so, the only thing's the bezel. Right, right, right. The, the bezel is something that makes it feel that's, dated. That's been something that we've said from the very yeah, beginning. Yeah, very beginning. It's like, man, this is a really big bezel, even for 2017. <laughs> right. But, like, whatever. It's fine for now. But when we get to 2020, 2021, is it really going to seem fine? Right, and right, right. People and don't really right. complain, but they, 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 they do bring it up. Like, it feels like a lot of wasted real estate. Yeah, well, for sure. You know? No, for sure. Which, apparently, they're taken care of. And uh, so, you know, to have 4K in handheld whatever who cares about that yeah, right. the 4k and handheld is not going to happen no 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 for sure so. but even then so let's i got a question for you if they were to able to hit the 4k upscale and but yet you know how breath of the wild sometimes has those frame rate drops yeah so is that going to be more clearly visible then because we're upscaled the 4k so sometimes that depends on your tv um, oh, no, I'm talking just handheld. If, if yeah, well, and handheld, well, handheld yeah. won't matter. They won't even use DLS in handheld. Okay, if, they'll, they'll if, just have that turned yeah. off. It save battery life. Just, well, turn, just turn no, off no. Off. I'm saying if they were to do somehow upscale the 4K in, I know they're not, but if they were, well, one thing. So, one, so we talked a lot about DLSS and like how it affects resolution. What people don't all, often realize is it's not just how it affects resolution. Go look at the frame rate of games when DLSS is turned on. The frame rate goes up as well. Okay. Um, so you're, you're, I'm not sure why the frame rate goes up per se. It just does. So right. that is also something that, you know, to consider that any game that has an unlocked frame rate also is just going to run naturally better without even that's right. updated. Because my anything. biggest concern would be you get up to 4K and then you all of a sudden start seeing some frame rate drops. Are you going to see that more clearly because it's 4K? Well, I mean, for, so frame rate drops to me, it's more of a feel thing when you're playing. Yeah. So. Like, sometimes it's jarring. Like, if it drops to single frames. Like, there's times, like, in Kokiri Forest, especially when it launched on Switch. Like, Oh, man. It, it hit some single single digits that were pretty rough. Um, they have they have patched it since then, and it, it's not as bad today. But you still can feel it. It's kind of chugging in there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, same thing, uh, Kakariko Village. It could chug in there sometimes a little bit, too. Uh, it's a it's a lot better now. They have patched it. It was it was it was interesting. Like when it released and it ran better on Wii U. But then people got to remember it was made for that system, right? You know. But yeah, I I think uh, I I think that that just comes down to feel. Okay. Um, yeah. More so, so than more so than so, unless it hits that single digits. Uh, yeah. That's when it doesn't matter what resolution you're at, you're gonna feel that. Right. Right. I mean, I felt that so, on handheld on Switch at launch. Yeah. I was no, like, Ooh. so I'm about to go try right now to see how it looks now on handheld because I haven't <laughs> played go. this game in handheld in the longest. You're right. Yeah. I know yeah, I can yeah. still beat it. Because so, they did do some but, updates to it, so it is a little smoother, but it's not it's still not perfect. Yeah. Um last time I played anyways, and I well I be, I have a new save file in Breath of the Wild, so I'm not back to Kakiri Forest yet, but Yeah. No, it, so to kind of wrap things up on my end, you know, I don't really care if handheld goes, you know, super big, which I know they're not. Again, they said, you know, according to this anyways, 720p. So I don't really care about that. I mean, would it be nice to make it look grand on your on your 4K TV? Absolutely. I mean, I I think my, I'm pretty sure my new new TV is 4K. So. Probably. If it's a new TV. Yeah, it, I mean, I got is it bigger than 24 so. inches. Yeah, it's 55. No, nope, like, it's 40. probably 4K. Yeah, they don't really yeah, make yeah, them yeah. at right, right, right. of, so, of that anymore. Would it be nice to have, you know, what, what, once you get up to that size, it's nice to not have the the blur. or The, the blur, yeah. yeah. Now, so, what, what I think is going to be interesting here is one thing that's just infamous on Nintendo platforms is anti-aliasing. Nintendo just doesn't do it. Um, and what's interesting is the crisper the image looks, the more the anti- anti-aliasing actually stands out where you can see jaggy edges. Um one thing, I mean, I don't think this is magically going to happen, but it would be cool to see maybe, hey, Nintendo decides to use anti-aliasing now. It would just be kind of nice. Um, there are there are ways you can handle it externally. If you buy, like, the M Classic cable, um, that basically adds like, adds, like, a pseudo anti-aliasing to everything to smooth it out a bit. Um, but it would be, it'd be nice to see if, with the increased power, if there's room 
I'd rather have 60 FPS and a native resolution oh. more than anti-aliasing, yeah. but if there's some headroom, there's like some anti-aliasing in some of these games. But I mean, HMK said it earlier, one, one thing that's great about Nintendo is the art direction they take with their games doesn't inherently need like all the power in the world. I mean, yeah, they could do more with it, mm-hmm. but like Breath of the Wild still to this day holds up. Oh, yeah. Um, because of the art direction they went with. Uh, and you look at even recently, like they did the Bowser's Fury. Looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. That it does. You know, you, you even like look at some old games they brought back. You know, Mario Galaxy, put that in HD. Look how good that looks. Ooh. That was a Wii game. I even Mario Sunshine. Mario <laughs> even Mario Sunshine. Like, I don't know. Mario Sunshine looked kind of rough to it me. It has some rough spot. It does, but like... Compare yeah, rough spots. It was more like gigantic rough patches, bro. Like, nah, Galaxy definitely. Was well, Ga- like, Galaxy, well, Galaxy always looked better, anyway. That's what we can all agree on. But yeah. Sunshine, I don't know. Like after seeing that in HD, I was able to see like, yo, this game is kind of ugly. Bro. Like, <laughs> oh, well, I mean, like, compare compared to Mario sixty four, then come say it's ugly. I mean, but like, bro, look, this is like Mario sixty four was on the sixty four. You take a game like Wind Waker, which was also also on the GameCube, and not even in HD, but you're to upscale that and like emulators and stuff. Wind Waker is miles yeah, it's better still, it's, looking than well, like, yeah, it's a cell shaded style right. too, which which that just that that goes they go look at Killer Seven back in the day and. What like Sunshine that. looked to me is that they took the models like from Mario Party Three, cleaned up a little bit, and just made it like, made a game out of it, <laughs> bro. That, <mm-mm>. but <laughs> Galaxy though, Galaxy though is the that 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 looked too good. I'm like, bro, this is a Wii game, and seeing it on the Switch was just I don't, I don't know. The fact that it was like locked in 60 frames. Well, I mean, most Mario ga- like all 3D Mario games aside from Sunshine, haha. Um, was they clocking at 60 frames? But seeing that on t- like 1080p. 60 frames like in this purest majesty is like bro this is like testament to like nintendo's idea of having these graphical styles like look that's a wii game and it looks amazing mm-hmm. on switch yeah. years later so yeah i mean technically i think even like with skyward sword hd looks really good the only the only knock i, w- I will give is because breath of the wild had all that grass that looks so gorgeous to not mm-hmm. have that in Skyward Sword HD. It's like, okay, I can tell this is an older game now because they set a new standard for what I expect foliage to look like in a Zelda game. <laughs> so you go back to that and yeah, you're like, yeah, flat but, textures. I mean, yeah. No, Man, no grass. My problem with Skyward Sword, as much as I love Skyward Sword and I thought it looked amazing on the Wii, I, looked, I thought it looked amazing on the Wii. And I just wish they just messed around a little bit more with the bloom and lighting effects in Skyward Sword. Because I'm like, okay, I understand. Sixty, it's like the first three. Well, sixty Zelda FPS. Has, sixty FPS. Is huge. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's impressive for a Zelda, for a Zelda three D three D Zelda game. Yeah. Uh, that uh, you know, that's not being you know messed around with emulators or like whatnot. That's impressive. But I mean, I still wish they would add some sort of like bloom or extra type of lighting that would just make it pop a little bit more, more something more along the lines of what we saw in Normaker HD. But, well, know, yeah, Windmaker HD um, had a lot more work put into it for sure. That was I mean, they even redid, they even redid some of the models. They added a first person mode that most people didn't even realize was there. Like they they did a lot in that game. But that was also the thing about Windmaker HD because they didn't do that with Twilight Princess HD. They had a, a separate. However, what they did with Twilight Princess HD, which I, feel, I that's the only reason why I give Twilight Princess HD a pass, is that while you know they messed around with the the models and the blue effects of Windwalker HD in Twilight Princess HD, they messed around a lot with the textures, and I sure. appreciate that because those textures went from A to like like Z, bro. Like they they put a lot of work into like redoing the textures. I'm like, okay, I appreciate that. A lot of people sandbag Twilight Princess HD because of like you know the you know the the lack of bloom effects but i mean like bro if you were to put like the walls and the floor and the details that you see in twilight princess against <clears throat> what you see in the wii from the wii u version there is a mess what hurts twilight princess hd um and this is through no fault of tantalus who did the port uh because because oh, yeah. like yes they did a lot of texture work but to be fair fans have been doing retextures of, of twilight princess in emulators for years so mm-hmm. it's not something we, like we haven't seen before like if a fan can do it of course you know, an actual development studio, Ken. You'd hope. that That's one yeah. reason why some people weren't as impressed. They're like, oh, dude, it'll be seeing better texture packs on emulators. But what really d- didn't do it any service is, remember the Wii U tech demo for Zelda? 
You gotta. You just have to hurt me again, man. I'm. I'm. I'm just saying that like people saw that. We were clearly robbed. an we were evolution. Robbed. We were robbed. Clearly an evolution of the Twilight Princess style. And then you're like, oh, Twilight Princess HD. Maybe they're gonna no. That's, no. What, they, that's what they wanted because it was that tech <coughs> demo and that stupid ass GameStop render that they <laughs> oh that mm. man like you know what render I'm talking about. The oh, yeah. using the signs and stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll I'll, like I'll, that's what we want. <laughs> and yeah. So like. That that was one problem I think is that people are like how could the Wii U tech demo look better than the H? It's like well because it's a completely different engine and it's just a tech demo yeah. and yes all of us Zelda fans would love Twilight Princess remade like that but it didn't happen and the only reason the Wind Waker got as big of an update as it did is because it was done by the actual Zelda team not a third party studio so not Grezzo not Tantalus and they want they were experimenting because they had never done HD development as a Zelda team before and they wanted to try out a bunch of different techniques that they would later apply to Breath of the Wild. So there was a lot more experimentation done with the game to make it look that way. Like they didn't have to replace character models. You just said like the Wind Waker just up from GameCube looks good. Like they don't need to put that much work in, but they did because they wanted to mess around with things to help teach the development team better techniques for Breath of the Wild, which obviously turned out pretty well because not only does the Wind Waker HD look fantastic, obviously Breath of the Wild does too. So that's one thing though that like that's like the one game the actual Zelda development team did. Like all the other remakes and remasters, like Link's Awakening, that was Grezzo. Majora's Mask 3D, Ocarina Time 3D, that was Grezzo. You know, Twilight Princess HD is Tantalus. Skyward Sword HD, probably Tantalus again. Doesn't look like it's something that was a really high effort. Um, right, you that, know, and we know the Zelda team's doing Breath of the Wild 2. That's already been announced, so I doubt they paused Breath of the Wild 2 to be like, oh, yeah, let's work on Skyward Sword. It's like, no, we could just hire somebody else to do that. Yeah. Heck, Grezzo maybe even did it for all we know. You know, I mean, Man. Grezzo ported Metopia over from 3DS, so. Um, but yeah, like, I, I just think that the expectations for Switch Pro, you can keep them in check and still be excited. Like, this is not going to be, ne- like, people that want them to go all out and have this be PS4 level, PS4 Pro level, like, yeah, could they technically do that? Sure, the technology does exist, but in an affordable package with a battery life and handheld Just that can actually that. last a decent amount, yep. you know, at least three hours, because they're not going to want to go lower than what the current Switch does, I don't think that really exists out there for them uh, in that form. Now, you could talk about your phones and all that. None of us are sitting there. I mean, I, I'm not. I game on my phone, but... Uh, dude, I watch like Netflix on my phone and it dies in like an hour and a half. So, mm-hmm. yeah, or you just got to plug it in and start to recharge it. And that's an iPhone 12, so it's like a newer one. Mm-hmm. So, like, the, the battery drain on phones is hor- horrendous. Everyone knows it. Like, it's one of the things that makes us replace our phones sometimes more often is, well, you know, you get a year in and your battery that's, doesn't say charge for more than half a day and you're not even touching it. One. <laughs> so, like, so that's what happens, and they, like they don't want that happen to Switch. They don't want you to get like a year into owning a Switch Pro, and suddenly the battery life is shit, and you're only getting a half hour on the go. Like that's not a good look for them. So they are going to stick with like a 10 watt profile. They're going to stick with I don't know. I mean, in Doctor Mode, they they could unlock that further. That kind of depends on do they stick with the same cooling solution. I would like to see them decide to go with vapor chamber, like phones and the Xbox does, because then they could really push it to like 25, 30 watts in in Doctor Mode if they want, but. I think that's obviously wishful thinking because it costs a little more, and Nintendo's going to make this thing probably, probably be two ninety nine. And I say this because a new report is out from Game Reactor mm-hmm. in Europe that Nvidia is apparently going to stop making the Tegra X one chip that's currently in Switch at some point this year. It's going out of production. Now I don't know if this is true. Of course, it's just Game Reactor and their sources. They were trying to vet the information from Bloomberg with their own sources. It turns out their sources are backing up Bloomberg, but then also saying, "Oh, by the way, Nvidia's internally they're planning to stop making the Tegra X1 chip set entirely at some point this year. They're just done making it. Um, so not specifically the Mariko version, the whole line. They're just done with Tegra X1. Now that's interesting, obviously, because really the only system. You know, the only any electronic selling right now that uses Tegra X1 is Switch. And it's selling by the millions. So it feels weird to just be like, oh, we're going to be done making it. Unless Nintendo, unless they're just done making it because Nintendo says, hey, we're going to actually like replace the Switch with the Switch Pro and just slide it in there at $299. Like they did with the version 2 Switch and phased out the version 1 Switch. They're like, we're going to slide this thing in at the same price point. 
We'll talk about it, of course. We'll advertise it. So if current Switch owners want to upgrade, fine. But we're just not going to sell the old Switch anymore. Which, the curious thing there is what happens with the light, since that's the cheaper system Mm -hmm. that the Switch Pro doesn't really do anything about because it's not... Unless they have a light version, too? I I have no idea. They could come up with an upgraded light version, too. I don't know. Well... What's also interesting is, if you look at sales of light, I think Nintendo thought light was going to be huge in Japan. Mm -hmm. I I literally think they thought, oh yeah, Japan loves handheld only game and light's going to be huge. $200 Switch. Right. Right. The only time the light sold well in Japan is after the Switch sold out during the pandemic. And then they sold a shitload of lights because that's all that was available. Yeah. Once the other Switch came back in stock, that's now back to leading in sales in Japan. So it's almost like people don't really want the light unless there's no other option. Well, right, right, me, because I mean the Switch could do both. Right, exactly. It's almost as if, yeah, yeah they like their handheld gaming, but they kind of like having that option that they oh, can put it on sure. TV, even if they're not going right. to take advantage of that option very often. It's still like, right. but it's an option, so why wouldn't I want that option? And it's a bigger screen. Why wouldn't I want the bigger screen? Again, to me, the the Switch Lite kind of feels more like a introductory Switch for like kids. Plus, I, I hate, plus Joy Cons, like, like a like a two DS. Yeah, right, right. I hate I hate pigeonholing it like that. But that's what it kind of feels like. Is it's more of a introductory switch. Well, and if you think about it, the Wedge 2DS, like what a weird design. I get yeah. that it was super Man, durable. I saw that. I'm like, bro, that thing looks so <laughs> yeah, I do. Janky. Yeah. But I mean, but yeah. we we got the Ocarina of Time one for my son, yeah. um, and like, I got the I got the box sitting over there. I'm like, dude, they, that thing went out of production quick. That thing just tanked in the market. But then they came right. out with a, with the 2DS XL, and that ended up doing pretty decent for people who. We just don't care about 3D, but we want the same form factor. Right. You know? Yeah. So why not pay a little bit less for the same form factor and the same power as a new 3DS XL? Right. You know, but you think about it. Even with the new 3DS, they had the new 3DS and the new 3DS XL. They stopped making the new 3DS like that because people wanted the bigger screen version. Mm-hmm. Even though they had the, the swappable faceplates, which I think was a really neat idea, unfortunately for mm-hmm. Nintendo, which they probably thought it was going to make a lot of money with those swappable faceplates. Even in Japan, people wanted the bigger screen version, and that's what we're seeing with the Switch. Is like I don't, I don't think when the, if this Tegra X1 stuff is true and they're done making it at some point this year, I'm sure they'll bank up enough to maybe get through the holiday. Um, but you know, heading into 2022, I don't see like restocks of the Switch Lite coming. I think they might just say, "Hey, look, people aren't buying this thing anyways unless it's a last resort." Like if you. I know we're in a pandemic, but if you happen to be at a Walmart or you happen to be at a Best Buy and you go to the Switch section, oh, you'll find Switch lights because no one's buying them. Mm -hmm. Everyone's waiting for the actual Switch to come back in stock. Like, it's just... You won't find that Sword and Shield um, Switch light, though. Well, no, no. I mean, special edition. That's obviously... (laughs) That's a little bit of a different story. You know, special editions are are, or whatever. And if anything, that's going to make, like, those special edition, like, Switch lights be, like, super valuable. Um, Mm Mm-hmm because there's not as many switch lights out there. So I think that that might be like, do you guys think like one, do you think they're actually going to be done making Tegra X ones? And two, if they are like, are we done with switch light? Like is Nintendo just going to toss it in the garbage and say, Hey, you know, we you tried know, it. Didn't work out the way we thought moving on. My take is that, you know, I, I like, I think Nintendo kind of prides himself with like having options on top of options because I mean, the switch itself as a console is like, you know, it has many options. They also want options for, like you said, you know, like an introductory level switch, something that kids want to have when the kids won't be able to break and whatnot, you know, especially with the whole joy con trip situation. Imagine like a six year old, you know, taking the joy cons out and just like, you know, biting on them and whatever uh they want they want to circumvent that i'm sure that seems like a very trivial problem but i mean it's something that does apply well to like certain families or whatnot but the whole deal with tegra like you know the with nvidia getting rid of the tegra chip i just like like uh, when you would when you see a situation like that you would think off the bat like, okay yeah they're getting rid of the light like how are they gonna make the light how are they gonna make the regular switch and then you know like, okay, the Tegra is getting discontinued. That also, by default, possibly means the discontinuation of the light and the regular Switch. And then that sounds insane it's all the same, when you yeah. say that. Right. It's like the best-selling like, system why, worldwide exactly, every month. Why like, would you... Yeah, why would you like, cripple it like they can't, that? They can't so even keep it in stock. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> like, right, exactly. Right. So there's there's two... I feel there's two outcomes to that equation. One, that the Tegra thing going out of production is bullshit. Or, like, that's one. 
Two mm -hmm. is that Nintendo apparently may have this like you know back pocket pan a uh, back pocket plan to replace the chip with a similar if not more yeah, powerful right. chip for their like for their standard Switch and Lite in order to be like revision version two. And then that has me thinking. I'm like, okay, that could be a possibility because like you know you would think oh that would cost a lot of money in terms of production or Nintendo to like shift everything to that by possibly a more expensive chip or a chip that does as well as the Tegra but of course if they're phasing out the Tegra that means they have to opt for another chip that's not being phased out thus being more expensive and that idea is like would Nintendo do that because that's more money but then you go back and like okay the Switch is doing well enough so they have the money to do that kind of stuff to invest more back into the switch which will only may benefit them in the long run for having a slightly more powerful <laughs> switch in terms of the revision of the light and the regular switch mm -hmm. but i mean who else is going to notice something like that so, except the hardcore market i have a the casual theory. market's not going to care mm -hmm. i have a theory and i didn't have this theory um until the news broke about potentially the tech x1 going on a stock and our realization is something so nvidia had a hiring post up um, hiring a senior developer uh, for their Orin line, which is like their top of the line Tegra chip that doesn't come out till next year for smart cars. Um, because there's a worldwide silicon shortage. That's one reason why, like, we can't buy GPUs. You know, right now we, we can't buy PlayStation 5s readily. Yeah, the they, semiconductors, yeah. Yeah, like the semiconductors and the silicon shortage. Like, so. What has happened is the car manufacturers are actually not having any slowdown in production. They're being prioritized for all the silicon and all the semiconductors uh, because they just have bigger contracts with the, you know, the the, the factories and the and the production lines. So my theory was when I saw that they were hiring the senior developer for the Orin chip, and in the senior developer hiring post it says for the purpose of smart cars and game consoles. It's like okay. I don't know that Nintendo's crazy enough to go with the latest and greatest technology and just severely cut it back so it runs at 10 and 15 watts or whatever. But I'm like, but if they're having a hard time getting Tegra X1 chips because they're made on a 16 nanometer process that pretty much no other chip on the market uses anymore. Everything is under 16 nanometers now. It's all it's all 12, 10, 8, and 7. They're even trying to get down to 5, but I don't think that's going to land for a few more years. So my thing is, since it's like the only 16 nanometer chip being made out there, it's not being made for cars. The semiconductors and the silicone are being prioritized for car chips. Uh, what if the whole idea here is, well, we can't get enough of these made anyways. We talked to NVIDIA. They tell us they have enough runoff from the chips they're making for the cars to be like, look, we have enough chips that don't hit the car specs, but can easily hit a spec that you would use at a lower wattage. For switch off off these top end ones that we're making now and focusing on and mass producing for cars for next year what if hey look we don't have any use for these chips because they don't meet spec for the cars this happens by the way guys with any new chips that come out there, there's only like a 50 percent turnover rate on chips where they make it and actually hits the spec they need like if you think about why why is there the 3090 the 3080 the 3070 3060 well they have a they, they make all the chips they make they're trying to hit the top end 3080 3090 but sometimes they come out of the factory and they can't meet specifications and run at the clocks and the speeds that they need to sometimes some of the cores don't work correctly you know mistakes on <laughs> the manufacturing so what do they do they chop it down to where it meets a spec for a 3070. They chop it down so it meets a spec for a 3060. So technically, they're all using like the same architecture and the same chip. It's just cut back because that chip couldn't hit the top speeds it needed to to qualify for a higher class of card. So they don't. Uh, if all the car manufacturers are like, "Look, we have we want this orange chip for all our smart car Teslas. We want the orange chip for all all our Teslas." But the turnover rate's only 50 percent. What happens to the other 50 percent of cards? Well, if NVIDIA is like, dude, Nintendo, you can have these for way cheaper because they don't meet the spec. And we're already mass producing these because the car manufacturers mm -hmm. get the priority on the chips anyways. We can give you more of these than we could ever give you Tiger X1s. And if that's the case, then Nintendo might be like, well, then screw it. Why don't we just flip the switch and say, you know what? <laughs> that could also... <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> they could also reinvigorate the market, which is already just balling mm -hmm. the switch is peaking boom we hit you up with a more powerful one switch lights we're probably still going to stay in stock for a while anyways because they always make too many of them because they're not selling mm -hmm. 
And then they say, look, yeah, we're done making the OG Switch and we're done making the Switch Lite. Now we just have this new one with the 720p OLED and, you know, it's basically the same form factor, no bezel. We're not switching out the Joy-Cons or anything, which would piss me off that they're not going to improve the Joy-Cons, but that's a whole other story that I don't know. Nintendo's got also all these lawsuits going on with it and maybe maybe they just factually don't want to fix the problem right now because then it's admitting that there's a problem and that hurts right. them in lawsuits. Um, that's, you know, people don't consider that Nintendo is a lot, like there's even governments in Europe suing Nintendo over it. Oh, so yeah. like they're in big trouble over these joy cons. And if they actually make a better one, they got, you got to kind of watch out for them kind of admitting that there's a problem and costing them, you know, several hundred millions of dollars that Nintendo does not want to pay, um, out to governments or out to consumers. Uh, that's why they've been offering these free joy con repairs, kind of hoping that like, yeah, people just forget about it. We'll fix them for free. Don't worry about it. Um, sweep it under the, here's the yeah, kind of sweep it under the, the yeah we know there's here. a problem well no we don't really know there's a problem but hey you know what it's out of warranty we'll fix it anyways you're not going to complain right you're not yeah. going to join the class action lawsuits right, yeah, right. like we're, yeah. we're fixing it we got yeah. it um, anyways I did to, so my thing is okay if the Tegra X ones are going out they're going to use fall off chips from the car manufacturing lines it kind of all lines up where maybe they could just get more of those chips than they can the X1 anyways so they can produce more switches anyways and next thing you know Hey, they're meeting demand. It's more powerful. It's still at two ninety nine. You know, they're not making mm-hmm. as much profits at that level with all the new tech in it. But also, hey, it's gonna fly off shelves. We still have a lot of the OG switches to sell off to. Maybe we, we chop fifty bucks off the price or something to kind of clear out that inventory. Keep the switch light at two hundred and say, screw it. We're not making any more switch lights right now. And then next year or the year after, you release, you know, the switch light pro or. You guys know it's going to be called like new Nintendo oh, Switch, right? New, new something. Yeah, it's going to be called new Nintendo yeah. Switch or like oh, yeah. Switch yeah. Switch XL, maybe because it has a bigger screen. The Switch U, maybe <laughs> Switch Plus. <laughs> I mean, I know some people want it to be called Super Switch, which I think would be really cool. Or like yeah. Switch Advance. Like, yeah, okay, yeah. there's better names. Switch Blade. <laughs> but like, yeah. If you look at Nintendo, what's consistently they've been doing with handheld XL and new, new and X, like it's XL and new. They used XL on the DS. For the DS XL, and they used it on 3DS, so it could be called that because it factually has a bigger screen. They could get away with calling it an XL, XL. yeah. Um, or you know, and and obviously XLs have always ended up being the top sellers for them, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, and just because because I look at it like this, Furukawa said they're only entering the halfway point of the switch. I have a hard time thinking that this switch in front of me right now, like in three or like even two years from now is going to really be enough for the market. Like, yeah, obviously third-party support's going to fall off a little bit because, hello, once they're done making cross-platform to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, you're going to see more focus on those specs and, and less ability to get you know anything but indie games on, on here. But you start to look at it even from Nintendo's perspective. Like, look, they're already not going to compete with power anyways, but they can do just enough to convince third parties that you should still support this thing because we're still moving 20 plus million a year. And now that we have this pro version, well, guess what? 60 million that we sold before last year that bought the OG switch or the version one switch. Guess what? They're going to want to upgrade. That's 60 more million sales over the next two years. Because people just want, oh man, I want that OLED. Or, I want that, I want that 4K or DLSS upgrade. I want 60 FPS Breath of the Wild 2. Yeah, or it's enough of a boost to bring in a whole another extra 20 so, million. Yeah, so like, I mean, it's again, it's super speculative based on spotty information here and there. But it's kind of like you know, I can kind of see like if you connect the dots, there might be something there where it's just they actually can make more of them because they're using a car chip versus using a chip that literally only their system uses. Because for those who don't know, the NVIDIA Shield TV that had the X1M uh, doesn't use it anymore. Oh. Like, they're, they, they've they stopped making it for that. They stopped making the Shield TV. The Shield TV. So, so then that leads... Literally, just Switch is the only thing using it. Honestly, then leaning more towards they would be... So what are your guys' thoughts? I'll be right back. I got to take a phone call. Yeah. Um, but you guys, you guys keep going here. And then... Um, I guess I'll leave you with, with, with this thought process. Off, off that crazy idea, do you guys think there's any possible validity to any of this? Because right now, there's just so much out there, but so little of it do we know because Nintendo is doing what Nintendo does and kind of deny, stay silent, we're not going to say much, and then they're right, just going right. to drop it whenever they feel like dropping it. Not for sure. Go ahead, HMK. All right. 
what I think about this is that, you know, I, I feel there's some sort of validity to the whole notion of a Switch, of a next Switch, Switch next. That's what I'm going to call it, new Nintendo Switch, whatever. I, like I think it. there's validity to it because, uh, you know, we're reaching a point in the Switch's life, like he said earlier, that uh, uh, it's claimed that we're four years in and we're going to have another four years because it's like, you know, halfway mm -hmm. throughout its lifespan. It's going to need something in order to keep it fresh. Man, like, yeah, the Switch has had a strong four years. But now as time keeps going after that amazing first year in 2017, and 2018 was a pretty good year. 2019, like, you know, as time is going, you know, years and years, like, keep getting darker in terms of, you know, like, what's new, what they have a plan specifically for the Switch. You know, I'm not the type of person to complain about ports, but at the same time, you know, the more ports we have makes me wonder, it's like, okay, what's, what, what, what does Nintendo have new in the tank? And something, like, really tells me, like, it's been this kind of journey Nintendo's been taking, like, maybe after the first year or two or maybe even three, that Nintendo's been experimenting with something that they want to, you know, do more with the Switch. And that I remember there was an interview not too long ago that, um, uh, Kazumi, I think, was saying that uh, they would like to see what they can do with the family of Nintendo Switch products. Right. You know, at the right. time, he was probably, you know, only talking about the regular Switch and the Switch Lite. But I mean, I felt that was like the first big hint that really put me, that really put into perspective to me at least, that, you know, Nintendo's like uh, looking towards a higher end version of this console, which is like, you know, of course, the base, which is like the base of everything. You know, light was something on the lighter end. And then whatever they have in store uh, beyond that is going to be the bigger end. I like, you know, like Prime said, uh, I really don't believe that, you know, people are expecting this to be like the next gen or the next thing or the next huge thing. It's like, no, it's just, you know, the next step for this specific gen that the Nintendo Switch, you know, has its identity under. And, you know, all this considered, I feel that this, you know, of course, it's coming out of Bloomberg, you know, uh, I forget, Ma Maz Mazuj, I butcher his name, but, yeah. you know, yeah, like, you know, he has a track record and stuff, and he's not going to sacrifice that just because, you know, he wants to entertain, you know, right, people that right, constantly right. talk about the Switch. No, Switch or sure, Switch Pro. Sure. Yeah, no. So I think there's validity to it. Yeah. Oh, for sure. There's. I definitely believe that there's some validity to it. And actually, to touch on your your family of systems, they were even saying family of systems before the uh, light came out, if I remember correctly. Right. So it, that kind of adds to speculation, of course, that something. You know, I don't think they're going to call it a family of Swiss systems if it's going to just end at two different types of systems. So well, I also don't think that like. So I I have a theory that the version two red box switch, okay, I don't think they would have ever even announced it if Switch Lite didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Like, right. I, I like let's think about it. Why does that chip exist? Everyone thinks oh because of the Switch Lite. No, because the first Switch had a major hardware issue that made it super easy to hack, and Nintendo was pissed. Because we, that hardware issue was a known issue with Tegra X1 that NVIDIA never told Nintendo about. Ew. So, like, and Nintendo's like, oh, shit, we got to do something. So, let's, like, like NVIDIA, you got to fix this. Like, I understand you had all these chips sitting around, and it might have been cheap for us, but, okay, let's clear those chips out and get something, you know, let's, let's update this and fix that security issue, which they did. And I think that would have just been like any other system. If you look at every major console platform out there they have chip swaps all the time for security mm -hmm. reasons and we never hear about it it's never news mm -hmm. i mean you can hear about it in, in, in like you know the, the doldrums if you're paying attention to like uh um, <laughs> right data your, mines yeah. of like os's and stuff but for the most part there's no there, 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 you know the version 2 switch isn't more powerful does it have a, does it a better battery life supposedly i had the version one and the version two i don't really notice much of a difference in the battery life yeah uh, it's just not a noticeable difference for me. So it's kind of like, I don't think we there would even be a, a red box switch if it wasn't for the fact that, okay, switch lights coming out, you know, so since switch lights coming out, we might as well just say, Hey, look, we also have a new, and, and what do they do with that? The old white box switch gone, done with it. So that's kind of like my thing. Like I, as much as like, cause, cause with 3DS, they ran, you know, 2DS, 3DS, new 3DS, 3DS XL. They ran all those systems together for a while. But I, I just wonder, we're in a different time with a different CEO who 
is very data oriented and very business oriented. And I just think he looks at the data and he says, hey, if we just swap out the current switch for a pro at the same price, how's that? I mean, that's not going to hurt the market. Right. And even if they do switch out, which, because, I mean, with you saying that the switch only use, is the only thing that ever really, I mean, only thing that actually uses the Tegra X1. Um, and that would make sense why NVIDIA would want to discontinue that and stuff like that. Um, but it also, you know, looks good to Nintendo if they say, look, even we have this top of the line chip in it, even though if you look under the hood, they're not using it to, the fu- to its fullest potential. Oh, not even close. Right. But they can claim they have it in there. And people that don't look into it that closely just realize, recognize the name of the chip, they're like, oh, it's got this chip in it. It's so much better. You can actually, you know, I want—I don't say I want to f- say fool people, but to a certain extent, fool people into thinking it's so much better because it has the, you know, better name brand in it. So let's get to the bottom line. Are we getting a Switch Pro this year? Yes. I think so. I think so. You think it's going to come this yes. year? You don't, you don't think they're going to wait till like, spring, p- possibly? Mm, no. Well, because it's, it's weird because of the whole situation with the world right now and the pandemic, right? Like, uh, it, it makes you think, I'm like, yo, Xbox, like, PlayStation and Xbox, they didn't wait. And then you would think, why would Nintendo? And to be fair, like, we, we talk about how, oh, like, PlayStation and Xbox can't keep up with the demand. Do people not remember what, how every console launch goes, right. even before Generally, the yeah. pandemic? Yeah. Like, do you Bro, guys remember the, I remember remember the, the Wii? PS3. Yeah, the Wii and the PS3. I remember there was a dude, uh, like, uh, it made news that a dude traded a PS3 for a BMW. That's how <laughs> scarce it was. Wow. Like, yeah. the guy really wanted a PS3 yeah. and he traded a BMW for it. Yeah, around launch time, of course. Yeah. And, like, you look at the sales. Like, we, we know what the launch sales were for PlayStation 5. It was $4.5 million, which is exactly what they sold for PlayStation 4 at launch, which wasn't during a pandemic. So, like, I look at it as, okay, yeah, the pandemic plays a role, but also uh, this is what happens at every console launch. So what the hell, like, is there really that big of a shortage or is it just, um, hello, the demand isn't slowing down because, yeah, the demand is a little bit higher than other console launches just because there's people at home. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. sure, if they would have made seven million at launch, maybe they would have sold seven million, unlike previous generations. But at the same point, I don't think they're really making systems at a lower rate than any other time. I just think mm-hmm. the demand is technically a little bit higher just because people are at home. Um, right. And I think there's a lot of OG PS4 owners that did not buy a Pro that were holding out for the next gen. Too. That that kind of is a, a thing I think that was happening too, because um, I know some people who own PlayStation Four that were, were debating on the Pro, debating on the Pro, but like, oh, but PlayStation Five has got to be around the corner, you know? Like, we'll, we'll yeah. just wait for the PlayStation yeah. Five. Um, so okay, so so we, we kind of think uh, it, it's going to come this year. Then part of it I think also depends on Breath of the Wild Two development too, because if it's so, not, do, do we think Breath of the Wild Two is tied to it? I, I yes, I, I okay. absolutely. And it is the 35th anniversary of Zelda this year. Um, granted, they're probably going to run the, the celebration through March 31st of next year like they did with Mario. Right. Um, but Well, or later, depending on when they actually fully start the celebration. You know you know what I'm saying? So, so are, do we think Breath I of the Wild 2 is coming? May. So do we think Breath yeah. of the Wild 2 is coming this year then? Yes. I could see it as a Please. holiday game. God. <laughs> well, okay, because some people are like, oh, the pandemic. I'm like, well, yeah, but they've been making this game since the end of 2017. Pandemic yep. wasn't, I mean, it's just using the same engine. So, like, it shouldn't take as long. It shouldn't take five years to slap this game together, even with the pandemic. So, you know, like, a big theory of mine is that I really think the reason why they're not showing anything is because it's not because they don't have anything to show. It's literally oh. just waiting from the, for, for, they're waiting for the okay from Nintendo. It's like, listen, we need this game to help solve the pro or you the plus or whatever the fuck. You yeah, you can't it, tell right? me that they, they could show us a full-on cutscene trailer in 2019, and they have nothing to show yeah, that's two cap. years later. They have something to show. Yeah. There, there's no way. They, they clearly... They're, they're just waiting. They're like, just waiting. even that cutscene trailer, there was more... They have more done... They didn't just make that cutscene trailer, and there was no other game. They, they, they obviously they have a lot more they could show. I think one thing yeah. that might be happening, 
Um, and this is just a, a kind of my own little Zelda theory brain going on. Two things. From a logical perspective, they don't want Breath of the Wild 2 to overshadow Skyward Sword HD and potentially make people oh, not, definitely not. Definitely not buy that game because people might not know this. Uh, Skyward Sword HD means a lot to AJ Anomo and Shigeru Miyamoto. Um, so Shigeru Miyamoto kind of stepped away from Zelda for a while um, after, after kind of checking in on Majora's Mask. Um, a little bit, but he didn't really have anything to do with it. He was just kind of being like, hey, you have X amount of time to get it done. You get it done in this time. I like what I see. We'll go with it. After that point forward, AJ and Noble kind of ran things. Um, and while, yeah, I think there were some games, I think that she, I think Twilight Princess, she gave me a one was listed as executive producer or whatever, but he didn't do anything. Um, they they, even they probably this, just asked him questions. Well, they said and... this in like, and I want to ask that like, yeah, I'd look at a build like once every eight months. Right. Yeah, yeah. He, he really had guys. nothing. He really had yeah. nothing to do with it besides making sure the game was actually being made. I guess. Yeah. Um, well, he so gets like, to call it a producer. So, so it was still, you know, and, and obviously AJ Nomo has gone from director into the producer role, and then Miyamoto really hasn't. But for Skyward Sword, Miyamoto came back into an active development role on that game. I think because of the motion controls in particular. Because Miyamoto was the one who pushed for motion controls in the first place. Um, so I think he came back to make sure that was done right. And then, uh, obviously, they decided that this was going to be one of the most story-intensive games in Zelda and be the game that sets mm-hmm. up the whole timeline. Mm-hmm. So it became this highly important game that Nintendo was extremely disappointed that it did not sell well. They thought this was going to be another Twilight Princess, another 8 million seller. Didn't even hit that halfway point of that. So, like... It, like, goes around the... It was around that. It was, like, yeah, it was like three and a half, four million. Yeah, it was, it was right. Yeah. So it's, like, that's not what they thought on a 100 million selling system... A Zelda game did that, and that, that don't sound right. But again, what that's the cliff that Furukawa's been talking about. Sales of the Wii were way the hell down. And technically, I don't know if people realize this, Wii U was announced to E3 before Skyward Sword released. Mm. Yeah. Ah. So, like, why is anyone buying a new game after you just announced a new system? True. Yeah, they kind of, yeah. Shut, they really shut themselves And And that. they announced it because the Wii had already started to stop selling. So, like, you know, the, basically 2010 was the last time that we did any sort of decent numbers. Heading into 2011, it really fell off a cliff and thought, okay, we better announce the next system. Why did you wait for the cliff fall? They could have, should have just delayed Skyward Sword and made it out of Wii U. That, I think mm-hmm. they learned that lesson. That's why they did it with, with Breath of the Wild. They said, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. Wii U is tanking. We're spending 200 plus million dollars on this game. We are not releasing this. Ex- We're not making a Skyward Sword situation, but worse. Mm-hmm. Not doing that. We don't want this highly game we think is epic, but then like we're leaving it to die. Um, granted, it might not have died. They could have ported it to Switch, like Mario Kart Eight did, and then just blew out the blew the hell up too. So it still might have did mm-hmm. okay. But I think it made a lot of sense to hype up new hardware. With hey, look, we've been hyping the Zelda game for how many years since 2014? Like, come over and and, and buy a Switch. Um, and right. you, Wii U owners, we're not forgetting you. We're releasing it the same day, but you know it's gonna be limited run because there's not that many Wii U's. We don't really care. <laughs> um, right. I mean, dude, for a time at launch, there were more Switch copies of Breath of the Wild sold than Switches. Because yeah. Switch was sold out, but Breath of the Wild wasn't. So people kept buying the game knowing they were going to buy a Switch to play it. Well, it was well, at one point, I will play this game. Yeah. Yeah. I am going to play this game. I just need it in my hands right now, yeah. even though I can't play it yet. Yeah. For whenever I get a Switch, <laughs> whether I buy it online or buy it in store, I already have the game I want to play. Um, so, like... So for Breath of the Wild 2, clearly I think they're further along than people might realize even with the pandemic. I wonder if like, so you have the Skyward Sword HD situation where that game feels important to Miyamoto and Eiji Nomu, so they they don't want it to be overshadowed. And two, there were Skyward Sword references in uh, Breath of the Wild. Bro, the- over the place, man. But yeah. like, we never really got anything from it. Like, the sword talked. Okay. The sword talked, but nothing really happened in game with it, which made me feel like they're teasing something for Breath of the Wild 2 is happening with the goddamn Master Sword. Yep. Something's happening. And I wonder if they want people to fully gross in, like all these Breath of the Wild players that didn't understand those references, because Breath of the Wild is the most popular Zelda game ever. So many of these players haven't played any other Zelda game. So, like, we want these players to hop in, play Skyward Sword. Like, un- get the story, understand some bit, and then we hit you with Breath of the Wild 2, which might build on, like, maybe Demise is back. Maybe, 
Girahim's back. Maybe Fi is, is is back because after all, the sword factually talked, and we know that's Fi. If you play Skyward yep. Sword, you know you know what that reference is. Yep. But it just never nothing actually happened from like did the sword just talk? Well, yes, the sword just talked. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? And then nothing happened. Like it, it talked, but that's it. They didn't go any no, further than they, that. They, because that was all part of the plan, man. Nintendo yeah. knows what they're doing. They're yeah, they know what they're doing. The they, they knew when they man. made Breath of the Wild. Yeah. There was a plan for Breath of the Wild too when Breath of the Wild was made, guys. Oh yeah. Oh sure. yeah, definitely, uh, yeah. absolutely. And especially Every if you guys got the the, cap. the true yeah. ending. I don't know if, uh, how many of you guys got the true ending, but if you get because there's like two endings. It's really weird. There's two endings in a Zelda game. What? And then there's a DLC ending on top. So, um, but like if you get the true ending, you know there's more. It very clearly was like the adventure ain't done. Yeah, you 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 stop the calamity. That's great. There's more. Yeah. Zelda made it very very clear. Ah, there's more issues going on. We ain't done. <laughs> the legend has more. But yeah, we're gonna walk off into the sunset for now. It's like now. okay, like Nintendo almost never ends a Zelda game on a cliffhanger because they almost every time they make one, they always they stand alone. We don't necessarily plan for there to be sequels. But then there's a sequel. Right. Like, the only other game they did that with, that they clearly planned for there to be a sequel, was Wind Waker. They ended Wind Waker by saying, okay, you guys need to go off and find new Hyrule. They planned for there to be a Wind Waker 2 before that got nixed, and then they went and made Twilight Princess. Obviously, we ended up eventually getting Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks that followed it up and ended up in new Hyrule anyways. But they were, like, factually, the Wind Waker 2 was in the works. E.G. Enoma was working on the Wind Waker 2. And then it was, um, I forget, it was, it was the president of Nintendo America at the time or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he was all like, nah, bro. He's like, dude, uh, no, 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 yeah. dude. The, the American audience yeah. was not into this, man. Like, And that's your biggest audience for Zelda. Let's, let's nix that. We got to go with something more Ocarina of Time-like. And then we got Twilight Princess, which was fine. Twilight Princess was a good game. Sold really, I mean, phenomenal. It was the best-selling Zelda game until... Until Breath of the Wild. Wild. So, and it was they were like, see, we know, we know. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then, of course, you know, E.J. You know, being what he is, like, well, I'm not giving up on the sequel idea. We'll just put it on the DS and do Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Track, which was fine. Those games are good. Um, even though Phantom Hourglass is my least favorite Zelda game of all time, I still don't think it's a bad game. I'll always remember the folding the DS puzzle. I mean, that was... So many people got stuck at that because, like, there's no other game that makes you put your your, like your DS into sleep switch, mode to yeah. complete a puzzle. Yeah. Like, no one's thinking, why would I put my, my DS into sleep mode? So people, people would find it out by accident because they were frustrated. I can't figure this damn thing out. Get they close their DS, they come back. Wait, it's stamped? What? Huh? <laughs> that That's like uh, that one Pokemon that you need to flip your 3D, your DS oh over in order to evolve. Yeah. And so, like, like who like, would ever think man, of that? Man, what the heck? Like, yeah. It's such a weird, like, but it was really cool. Like, it, it's one of those aha moments. Like, I didn't know you could do that. I thought it was just sleep mode. I didn't know you could do a gameplay mechanic with that. Um, so, like, okay, so we think Breath of the Wild 2 is coming with the Switch Pro, or at least there are planning to maybe make that like mm-hmm. a launch a quote unquote launch game. Guys, it's going to come to the original Switch. Don't worry about that. They're yeah. not leaving the 80 yeah. million, no, 90 no, million sure. Switch owners behind. I, it might run at a better frame rate and stuff like that on the Switch but it's still going to... The way Breath of the Wild plays today on Switch, if you're okay with that, that's probably what Breath of the Wild 2 is going to play like. Which yeah. I think most people well, are, sure. are, are perfectly fine with it. So Cool. Um, but definitely a way to push New Harbor for the holidays. The reason that I asked is because if we thought Breath of the Wild was was because there's been like reports that maybe it was delayed, which I find reports of delays funny since there's no one release date. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, maybe maybe internal delays, but since when do we hear about internal delays? Especially when there's not a there's not a like the only time we hear about that. internal delays is see, here here's the here's the rule of thumb with Zelda games. If Nintendo gives you a release date that's a year out, it's getting delayed. Yeah. Every time they they like example Breath of the Wild, they said when it was revealed at E3 2014, this game is coming out in 2015. Yeah, it's getting delayed. <laughs> it's getting it's getting delayed. <laughs> if, if you look at the history Man. of Zelda games, when they give you a date that's a year out, no, at least go you a laugh. year past you that. Laugh. At least go a year right. past. But they purposely haven't given us a date because I think what we, what we found out with Nintendo lately is they like to announce, give it to you in a few months. Announce, well, right. give it to you in a few They've months. They've been doing that very recently, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so and so I think it's a new strategy for them. Like, look, we're not going to promise until... Dude, this game's done. It's, it went gold. Now now we'll tell you. It's, it's gold now. technically not a delay if there's never been a release yeah. date established. So, so, I, so my right. thought process was, they don't... Okay, so 
Right now, Pokemon Legends Arceus is scheduled for early 2022. So you would figure Mm -hmm. that's coming before the end of the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. Nintendo wants it up before the end of the fiscal year. They want it to be their Animal Crossing next year. Where they released Animal Crossing before the end of the fiscal year this year, for last year. So, that's an open world game. I don't think they want Breath of the Wild and Pokemon Legends next to each other in a release slate. I don't think that's good for the Pokemon company. But the thing is, it's going to, like... That's that's the whole argument of, like, you know, disposable income. Because, I mean, like, it's Pokemon, it's going to sell. <laughs> but it's like, also you know, time. Yeah, it's also I know, time. but I mean, like... It, no, 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 but I mean, no, like, no, no. Even so my point, time and stuff like that. My point was that uh, they would, that that almost supports them releasing Breath of the Wild this holiday, so that you get a three month break until Legends. You know, kind of. Oh yeah, definitely. Space then, yeah, that's what I was. I was saying like because some people say, well, Breath of the Wild two will come out in the spring. You know, release on March third, like the anniversary, and it's like, okay, yeah. but like if Pokemon Legend comes out around the same time, they're two really big open world games. I feel like Nintendo will want some space. Between those games, because people that play it are going to sink hundreds of hours in. You're going to want to like give people who want both the time to actually enjoy both. Um, and plus, again, space out sales. You know, Breath of the Wild Two is going to sell at least ten million, at least yeah. half. Oh yeah. Because I mean, if you look at the history, like Galaxy Two sold at least half of Galaxy One, so it's like they're going to sell at least ten, which would be the second best sell- Zelda game ever. So they know those sales are guaranteed. Released during the holiday period, last Zelda game didn't come out during the holiday period, so maybe ten millions under that might be ten million just during the holidays. Who the hell knows? Right. Um, I mean, I really don't know. I think the moment they show Breath of the Wild two, it might be end up being the most hyped video game of all time. Yeah. I, I mean, it will be for me. Breath of the Wild was for me cause when I played it at E three twenty sixteen. I mean, right. it was game uh-huh. over there. I already knew when I played that demo. I'm like, holy shit, they got it right. Uh huh. What even is that? That was just, like, remember me at E3 when I said, yeah. this might be the greatest Zelda game I've ever played, and this is just the opening the area. The demo? Yeah. Of a demo. <laughs> right, yeah, right. Like, just this area alone. Holy shit. Right. Um, so it's like, Breath of the Wild 2, when they finally announce it, and as long as it looks good, and especially if it's got some hardcore references to Skyward Sword that just came out, or, or you know, whatever... Link's Awakening, since they just did, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they just had that remake come out, you know, in 2019. Like, dude, people are going to be so hyped. So, I think I'm leaning. See, I, w- I was originally thinking maybe they delay it, but you know what? I think the stars are aligning for yeah. Switch Pro this <laughs> holiday. Yeah. <laughs> now, I want to touch on this briefly before uh, we wrap things up. Going a little off topic from Nintendo here, Microsoft uh, and Bethesda's deal. It's really Microsoft and Cinemax, to be fair. The deal is finalized. Europe approved it. The United States approved it. That's the only territories that really mattered for them to get this deal done. Because that's where all the studios are located between the U.S. and Europe. Or North America and Europe. Yeah. So, Phil Spencer came out after it was done. He said, look, the deal's final. And yes, there's a lot of games are going to be exclusive. Because my, Phil Spencer before said, well, you know, we'll play it by ear. But the deal wasn't done yet. And he even said, we can't talk about their games until the deal's done. The right, deal's right. done. The ink is <laughs> the ink is dry. They have signed the papers. So, what do you guys think about this Zenimax deal? Because this has been a kind of a big point of controversy coming back to the forefront. Because I think there were some fans hoping that the deal would get nixed by one of the governments. Didn't happen. So, like, what do you guys think? See, I own all the systems. I own a Series X, a PlayStation 5, and a Switch. So, like, to me, but but all Bethesda games are basically going to be on Game Pass, which just made my gaming much cheaper. Because I don't have to buy the games at 60 bucks a pop. I could just, they're, they're already there on Game Pass, a service I already pay for. So, for me, I'm like, God, you know, as a game reviewer, as, like, a game guy who streams, like, that's great for me. But I play on everything. At least I do this gen. This is the first gen I think I've owned all the consoles. At least for a while. Oh well, no. You see, I've had Xbox and and, and like Nintendos before and, and gaming PCs, but I've never had the had a I've never really deep dove in the Sony before. It's my mm-hmm. first time owning like Sony platforms super early and, and trying to get into the Sony games. So, what are you guys' thoughts overall on this deal? Because my my thought process is, well, Microsoft had to do something because they've been locking up studios for a bit, and now they legitimately have a claim that hey, in the in the Microsoft ecosystem, which includes PC, X Cloud and Xbox, we'd actually now legitimately have a shitload of exclusive games. 
mm-hmm. that people care about. Between all those studios plus the prior studio, you know, the studio makes Hellblade. Like they have all these. Like granted, we haven't seen the the fruit of these studios yet, but it's gonna come. Mm-hmm. I mean, imagine you know, think about this, guys. Skyrim's on everything, right? Yeah. Literally on everything. We we've seen it run on Alexa for crying out loud. <laughs> hmm. Amazon Alexa. It was kind of a joke, but still. Skyrim's on everything. Elder Scrolls Six ain't gonna be on everything. Nope. You want it? You better get Game Game Pass or uh, own a PC or on an Xbox or get into their cloud service. Um, so, like, what do you guys think about this deal? Obviously, for Microsoft, it's mostly all good news. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Microsoft shits seven point five billion dollars. That they're one yeah, of the right, most richest right. companies in the world. That's like one quarter of revenue for them. Um, right. So, like, what do you guys think about this deal? Like, do you think it's a good thing? Are you excited? Like, is there hope that maybe Microsoft can kick Bethesda in the butt and get them to stop having the same bugs in every single game? Because <laughs> that's like a, a bugaboo about Bethesda games is all the Fallouts have all the same bugs. All the Elder Scrolls games have all the same bugs because they keep using the same engine and they don't patch it. Uh, but yet the games keep selling like crazy. I So, I don't know. Like, what do you guys think? Like, guys, guess what? You want to play Doom? You're probably not getting Doom, the next Doom on Switch, guys. Oof. We got Doom Eternal on Switch. Big big undertaking. Probably not happening anymore. Not going to get the next Wolfenstein. Any hope that you were going to get another Skyrim game on Switch ain't going to happen. Unless, of course, a deal is struck to xCloud on Switch. Right. That's Which, something that that's a down-the-line thing because xCloud isn't fully launched right now. So, yeah. Right. Um, anyways, what are your guys' thoughts? I, I'm, I'm kind of indifferent since I own everything, so it doesn't really affect me. Well, honestly, to me... I don't know if I really play a whole lot of Bethesda games. I don't really game a whole lot anyway. So to me, it doesn't really have a whole lot of effect on me. Um, but what do you so, think? Like, so the but, big controversy is basically mostly PlayStation fans. Because yeah, even like oh, Nintendo sure. fans aren't yeah, as mad because we haven't really been getting well, these games until the Switch, anyways. Right, and it does seem like out of the you know the other two two competitors to Microsoft themselves, they are a little bit closer to Nintendo. So the chances of if they aren't going to go exclusive to Xbox, you know, the next logical step would be possibly allowing Switch to have something. Well, here's the thing. I, I'm not even worried about Switch getting anything. I don't think it's going to happen. I think all the games are going to be made in the future, like exclusively for Series X and their cloud service. Oh, yeah. uh, and PC, of course. I, I well, One thing I, I, I think here um, is that... To put context to this, it's basically PlayStation fans that are pissed off because yeah. all these games have been multi-platform forever since the dawn of time, and now they're not. And they seem to be the ones that are super salty because they don't want to have to well, get into X Cloud streaming. They don't want to go into a streaming service. They don't want to have to buy another console or have to you know get a decent gaming PC. And most of them aren't even willing to consider xCloud on an Android phone because they just don't even want to consider console gaming on a phone. Mm-hmm. Even if it even if it runs well, they don't even want to think about it. So it, it, that seems to be the stemming here is just PlayStation fans are really pissed off, which personally I find it to be a little ironic when you have, while Sony's not necessarily buying massive studios, they have bought some, Well, they get games like Final Fantasy XV exclusive well, not because just they that, buy it. But- but how many times has Sony fans rubbed the face, rubbed the faces of? Oh, we have uh, all the exclusives. We have all the exclusives. Yeah, yeah, we right, have right, all yeah. the exclusives. Oh, Sony fans have, have been rubbing. Sony fans have been rubbing um, Xbox fans' face, and we have we have the best exclusives. You're irrelevant besides Halo and Gears. Yeah, Nobody now, cares now about that it's you. the tables are turned. And then obviously, like, oh yeah, Nintendo right. can match us with exclusives, but we also get all the third party games. So like, we're technically the best platform for gamers. And now it's kind of like. Dude, Microsoft made a power play. Yeah. Yep. So what now? Well, what are you guys' thoughts on this? Do you guys even care? I mean, I have multi-platform game right now, so to me, it's kind yeah. of... I don't care about console wars, but I find it interesting that I could kind of feel for, for people that were like, dude, oh, I was saving sure. up for a PlayStation 5. I played Doom Eternal. It was, I was looking forward to Elder Scrolls 6. We've been looking forward to Elder Scrolls 6 for like over a decade, and now I don't get it on my platform. So what are you guys' thoughts on that? Yeah, go for it, HMK. Like, the thing is, you know, uh, like, for Bethesda games specifically, I was never really, what's the word, you know, invested in those games. Sure. Or not, like, uh, Elder Scrolls, Doom, all that good jazz, you know, yep. Fallout, blah, blah, blah. I was never really ex- uh, uh, invested in that. But, you know, I, I saw all the discourse between, like, you know, the console war fanboys and whatnot. And I'm like, every time I see that on my social media feed, I'm like, bro, console wars have been dead 
for years and then they, they keep trying to one up each other and stuff and this move that happened with xbox with microsoft you know buying out bethesda you know like people really out here thinking that corporations you know the the, the loyalty of corporations you know whether it be nintendo sony microsoft whatever they, they think these loyal these they're rewarded for their loyalties in terms of like thinking that these corporations are your friends no, and you know no, none at, of them are. At, at, at the end of the day they're not your oh, none friends of them are. none of these all of them are, are trying to find friends. a way to make the most money out of your wallet the bottom dollar mm-hmm. right so it's all about like you know but game pass sure, it's your you friend know, it makes things cheap i'm like no they're looking at game pass yeah. as the next netflix they're looking to dominate oh, like with, with, with the whole notion of you know oh i should be rewarded for my loyalty i'm like you know how good stuff man you bought this console thing in that you know elder scrolls 6 or that other game that they're like the space version of oh space yeah of uh, um god what's that called uh it's a really big game it's yeah, a new it's a new Star- ip um Star- yeah, starfield, Star- starfield yeah starfield yep. yeah yeah Whatever. Now that the fact that the now that apparently these games might end up being like 70, 75 or not, if not even like 90 percent, you know, exclusive to Xbox. Now, yep. this is that, you know, it's all this point of contention of competition in which these consoles is. I'm sure there's like like, you know, I keep on saying this whole idea that the whole notion of console wars is dead but that doesn't mean that these companies still can't compete against each other but in different ways well they're competing like, for your time wars, right yeah. so yeah they're competing for your time and your bottom dollar your, your disposable income that's yep. what they're competing for at this point but they're no longer competing for uh best specs they're not competing for like oh who yeah, uh, they're, they're not slapping each other best. down in the commercials like the nintendo yeah. days you know the sega versus nintendo days when they were just exactly trashing because, you know, they each all other. They all like look for different audiences at this point, you know. The last uh, I keep saying, the last true vanguard of like what you know people perceive a console from like maybe ten years ago is PlayStation. You know, it's like oh, people they they claim it to be the best place for gamers, a console to play your games the best way possible for your TV. That's PlayStation. When you have Nintendo Switch, you have a hybrid console, something you take on the go, something that you can plug in at home, something that could you know like. I, I would say cover the field of most ages when it comes to like up and coming gamers, older gamers, something that applies to most of the market. Then you have Xbox, the whole deal with Microsoft. You could play your games on Xbox. You could play it on, you know, Game Pass. On they're, they're looking at like games. As a, all, it's oh. like games as a service. Exactly. Games as a service Yo, so, is what they're doing. It's options. So, exactly. It's options. These three big, the big three are looking at different perspectives of times. And then there's a lot of gamers on social media that really don't get that. And they're like, you know, the console wars have been dead. However, that doesn't mean that they don't compete for your disposable income. What they're competing now is by showing you, hey, listen, we can offer this instead of, oh, this is the best console. Like, no, this console can offer you this type of experience, right? So now with Xbox Mm -hmm. buying Bethesda, they're trying to bring that legendary developer into their fold and tell them like, hey, listen, now that these games are going to be here, this is what else Xbox can offer. Or whatnot, you know. The, these games are going to be built for Xbox, not like, and like the whole perspective, the di- the, pi- the the paradigm shift that people need to look at. Look at is that these games are going to be built best for the console, oh, not be built to be the best game there is. And people miss that because they keep on thinking that every game I should play should be built to should be built to be the best game ever. No, it's being built to be the best experience on this specific on this specific uh, you know platform. And that's what Bethesda is going to be doing for the Xbox console. Mm-hmm. So, you know, at, 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 the, at the end of the day, it doesn't really rub me the wrong way at all. You know, there's corporation, there's, you know, corporate businesses, corporate competition, corporate tactics and whatever. But seeing people get salty about it, I'm like, bro, where have you been for like the last, the past one? I years? also think it's like, like you know, it, I also think it was, well, it was clearly smart for Microsoft. They, they, right. need, they needed yeah. a bigger splash in the studios they were getting. They needed to get a bunch of big IPs in. And they got a bunch of IPs that I think mesh really well with the kind of IPs they've been making. You know, very Western games. Oh, yeah. Whereas, well, what's Sony doing? Well, they're, they're, they're locking in Demon Souls Remastered, right? They're locking in a uh, remake, I guess. So they're, they're locking in things like Final Fantasy XV. Like, while Sony appears unfortunately from a marketing perspective to have abandoned the japanese audience they haven't abandoned the japanese developers that make games that sell really well in the west and that is, those are the deals they're locking in final fantasy 7 remakes up locking it in like mm-hmm. they are very clearly um know what they're doing and here's the thing i don't think this deal is gonna hurt playstation sales for anyone who's worried about it i think one thing we have to remember because i understand there's going to be some sony fans that 
bought a PlayStation 5, hoping this deal wasn't going to go through. They bought it for the Sony exclusives, but they were kind of hoping they could still play their Dooms and their Fallouts and the next, you know, Starfield and all this stuff. They were hoping they could play that. Here's the thing. One thing that we don't talk about very often, gaming is an expensive hobby. Mm -hmm. It's a very expensive hobby. It's always been an expensive hobby. It's not like people look at it as well, dude. I, I, I you know, I, I'm a we're a one income family. I work at Subway. I can't afford all this stuff. It's so unfair. It's like, well, then maybe you shouldn't be into a gaming hobby then, because it's just it's too expensive. Or if you want to be in a gaming hobby, guess what? You're gonna have to have multiple systems if you want to play all this stuff. Or you're gonna have to make compromises, like being willing to use XCloud on your phone, like there's so many options to game all three major console manufacturers are giving you all these different options and yes i don't expect any of you guys to be like me i have a gaming pc i have the latest series x i have the playstation 5 and the switch and i'll get a switch Pro when it comes out i technically this laptop on camera here can game as well like i don't expect people to be all you know iphone 12 i have all the latest tech like i do but i'm also a youtuber okay i kind of cover this stuff it makes more. If I wasn't a YouTuber, I would just own a Switch and a gaming PC. But I'm a YouTuber, and my YouTube income affords me to partake in other parts of the gaming industry that maybe I couldn't afford to. We need to understand, guys, that gaming is expensive. Seventy dollar games on PlayStation Five. Nintendo rarely dropping MSRP of their games, charging you sixty dollars oh. a pop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Microsoft they, they have games as a service, but you want any third party games that aren't on it, you're still gonna have to pay sixty, seventy dollars a pop. And you might end up spending more money on that games as a service, which is what Microsoft is hoping, than you would have annually buying games. So like. In the end, they're all just nickel and dime in you and trying to get all the money they can and yep. a hobby that's built on being expensive. Yep. This isn't like a book. You go into a store, you spend 30 bucks, you might read that book for a month. That's not the case with games. You're spending 60, 70 bucks a pop, plus you got to spend three, four, five hundred dollars to buy a piece of hardware to do it with. Or a gaming PC, God forbid. Those are like stupidly expensive. So, like, I just, I, I think this is a situation where gamers, yes, it sucks if you own PlayStation systems and you wanted these games. Guess what? You're going to have to buy an Xbox. Or you're going to have to use xCloud. Or you're going to have to accept playing it on a PC. That's just the way it is, and it's kind of too bad, so sad. It's kind of like people who have been begging Nintendo to go third-party forever so they can get Nintendo games on their Xboxes. and, so, and really, That's not happening. You see how well Switch is selling? Nintendo right. ain't changing. Right. They ain't giving their games to PC. They ain't giving their games to you guys. Right. Because that's what makes their system sell. So, you kind of have to accept the forest and the trees that are in it. This is this mm-hmm. is how the gaming industry works. So, I'm not saying that you guys can all afford to be multi-platform gamers. Of course not. I'm privileged to be able to be one. But at the same point, this is the hobby you're in. If you want to partake in all of it, you're going to have to set money aside to pull it off. Or, just be happy with what you got. Does Sony not give you enough exclusives to be happy? I mean, I granted, I know PlayStation 5 really only has Demon Souls and Astro Boy at the moment for exclusives. But in the future, you think there's not going to be enough exclusives to make you happy on PS5? You think now that you own an Xbox Series X and you guys get mad about Final Fantasy 15 or whatever, you think, well, now they, they just spent $7.5 billion to give you exclusives. Mm-hmm. You think there's not going to be enough to satisfy you now? As a Switch owner, are you not satisfied with what Nintendo's delivered? And the partnerships they made. I mean, we talked about Breath of the Wild 2 and a little bit about Pokemon Legends coming out. Hell, we didn't even touch on the fact that we have, you know, the Pokemon Diamond and Pro remix this year. We have Metroid Prime frickin' 4 coming. Oh, and Bayonetta 3. Like, we had some big games coming, folks. And this is just the games we know about. Mm-hmm. I didn't know we were written a, a, a Mario Golf Super Rush with an RPG right. mode like when I was a kid. Right. Who the hell knew that was coming? Right. I mean, I don't see you guys might care. Mario sports games, everyone cares about it. But I usually don't care about Mario sports games either. But the moment they said the RPG, oh yeah, for sure, single player, I was like, wait a second now, wait, hold up, hold up. So like, Scar Sword she like I. Here's the thing: be happy with what you have, and just be happy that you have it. Because I remember times in my life, I had nothing, hmm. literally nothing. I had to sell all my games. Like literally in 2019, I sold my Switch. I sold my Xbox One X that I got for Christmas. Uh, I sold my entire physical Switch collection, which was over 50 games. Uh, and 
yeah, I, I even sold like parts out of my PC I use for YouTube because I was poor as hell and I'm a family man with three kids. I lost my job, had no money. YouTube wasn't cutting it. I was screwed. I sold everything I could sell. I understand that gaming is a luxury. So you either make the sacrifices to do it or you realize there are technically more important things in life than playing a video game. So why are we bitching about it? These are just companies competing for your bottom dollar, right? Yep. That's all they want. Yep. They just want your bottom dollar. They're just doing what it takes to try to make the most amount of money. I don't fault any of these companies for doing it. I don't like were people mad when Nintendo bought Retro Studios. Hmm. Like these companies are just trying to make as much money as they can. You mm-hmm. know, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Sony eventually buys From Software. You know, they, they get most of the games from From Software, even though there's a rumor that Microsoft has a game coming from them soon. But technically, I can see that being a smart purchase for, for Sony in the future. You know, Sony bought Naughty Dog. Like, this is just what people do. This is the industry we're in. Mm-hmm. You know, no, it, it's just like when people get pissy when EA buys a company. It's like, oh yeah, we hate EA. It's like, EA's just doing what everyone else is doing. Yep. Trying to make the right. most money they possibly can. And be happy because you guys do clap back at EA enough that you know, every now and then they, they correct their mistakes and give us a good game, like <laughs> like uh, the last uh, Star Wars game. Like they finally, Squadrons was really good, and then uh, uh, The Last Jedi was really good. Right? Was that, was that, was not The Last Jedi? No. Uh, uh, that was the movie. Uh, um, yeah. God dang it. Yeah, right. I uh, just played I, it. I have it downloaded on my Series X, so it's on Game Pass. Uh, this, 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 this is going to bother me. It's Hold something on. Jedi. It's something Jedi. I know that. F- Fallen. Is it Fallen, Fallen, Je- uh, Fallen Order? Fallen, Fallen Order. Order. Jedi Fallen Order. Jedi, Jedi Fallen, Fallen Order. Order. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, like, and that game ended up being really, really good, and nobody thought that could happen after what they did with Battlefront, Battlefront 2, and stuff like mm-hmm. that. You know, Madden right now has a shitload of backlash over the really shitty job they did this year. Watch them correct it next year and, have, and do something good. They've been getting backlash over not having college football for so long because of all the contract disputes. Now we're getting NCAA football back. They're not calling it NCAA. They're just calling it college football. Like, Okay, oh, Plants for Zombies, oh my god, they really shit the bet, and then they released a good one. Like, hmm. speak with your wallet, companies will correct. Mm-hmm. And that's what's happening even with EA. You wonder why FIFA hasn't gotten any better? Because people are speaking with their wallet, and they keep spending money. They keep that buying game. it. Yeah, like, like, it's not going to get better because they keep buying it. But Madden sales are down, down this year. So the next Madden's going to have positive changes in it because of it. That's speak with your wallet. So like, you're not happy that Microsoft bought all these Bethesda stuff. Well, then fine. If you own an Xbox platform and you're not happy about it, don't buy the games when they come out. Don't partake in them on Game Pass. It'll make if my, if the sales are way down and Microsoft's not making money on them, you don't think they're going to say, "Huh, maybe we should put it on PlayStation." Oh yeah. Of course they will. Yeah. If you speak it with your wallet. But guess what? We all know what's going to happen. Xbox sales are going to go up. Game Pass subscriptions are going to go up. And the games are going to do record numbers on Xbox platforms. So, be smart with your money. Buy what you can. Enjoy your life. We only got one of them. Yeah. And hey, don't be don't be ashamed. Like, I see this happen sometimes. Uh, there was someone who, on one of my live streams, was like, because when I told the story about how I sold all my stuff in 2019... Um, you know, because obviously I've rebuilt some of the stuff by now, all the, some of the collection. I don't, I don't have all my physical Switch games back. I don't think I'll ever have that many again. Um, but I, they, they were, they were like, oh, I would never do that, man. Like I would like pack that stuff in my car and just like sleep in my car. And it's like, okay, well, you try that. With it, okay, kids, okay. You know? So like, I lived out of my car. I actually lived out of my car when I was younger. Let me tell you, you live out of your car. How are you going to get out of your living out of your car situation? You need gas in the car to get anywhere. And then you need to get you need to have clothes to get a good job to look good in interviews. You yeah. need to go somewhere to take a shower. You know what if it, like I live in Wisconsin, middle of winter, it's too cold to go to a lake and do it. So oh, goddamn, I got to go spend you know ten bucks to get into the YMCA just so I can go in the locker room and shower up quick. Like these are the sacrifices I made back then. It's like hey, guess what? There's things that are more important than physical collections of, of shit. Also, try living out of your car with three kids. Well, I didn't do that. Well, no, no, no. But, 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 yeah. but at your I would time, never right. put my kids in that right, situation. Exactly. And that does happen, by the way. There are people that have kids in their homes. Oh, no, for sure. Um, but yeah, it, I don't know. That, that's just me. Um, 
I, I think people getting angry over this stuff is stupid. Like, there was someone today on Twitter that was, like, telling me how much the Switch sucks and all this stuff, and it's like, okay, okay fine. Like, the, guess what? Not every platform's for everyone, and none of these companies have to cater to your whims. Is it really worth getting super angry about? Yeah, it's like when I was just... when I was a kid when I was younger I yeah. used to get I used to get mad about this stuff I used to think this stuff mattered you know now I'm yeah. older and I'm like you know what this is all entertainment it's like getting mad that like a show goes from Netflix to Hulu it's like yeah well what are you gonna do right if, if it matters that much you get Hulu too if you can't <laughs> aff- if you can't afford it whatever cancel your Netflix subscription mm-hmm. get Hulu watch it there finish up and then get your Netflix like I don't know mm-hmm. be smart Anyways, I don't want it all that's my lesson. To end the, end the podcast with. Uh, so, guys, uh, you should definitely go check out HFK. Uh, he's been Absolutely. popping off his videos and live streams over on Twitch. Um, so, check him out. Yeah, basically, HMK, what? Everywhere's the HMA Killer. Can't ever remember. HM Killer, yeah. HM Killer everywhere. HM Killer everywhere. So, literally, I'll, I'll link his Twitch on below, his Twitter, his uh, YouTube, and all that. He does a lot of types of videos. You want, to, want to tell what kind of videos you do in case they don't know? If you guys don't know, over on the HMK channel on YouTube, I do a lot of Legend of Zelda, Nintendo Switch, Super Smash Bros., and Kingdom Hearts videos and stuff. I've been, you know, going here and there with other, uh, you know, topics and whatnot, but that's basically what I'm known for the most. So if that's within the realm of uh, what you're interested in, you should definitely check out my channel over at youtube.com slash HMKilla. All right. There you guys go. And again, you can check him out on Twitch. He was just, uh, today, he was just streaming Persona, actually, when we're done. Here he's going back to his stream. I, I saw that. So yeah, if, mm-hmm. that, that that one dollar donation at the end that was me. <laughs> yeah, I saw. It. I'm like, hey, I'm like, oh, that's, that's a problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, Eric, I know you can find him on Twitter uh, at emo something seven ninety. So e m o h eighty seven ninety. You guys know this is Nintendo Prime. You can find this podcast uh, if you don't want to watch the video version. Or, uh, you can go on pretty much any podcast app in the world. Look up Nintendo Prime podcast. We're there. Uh, if you uh, are listening to the audio version and you want to see the video version, how cool the set looks and see our beautiful faces and any fancy editing I do, which there probably won't be as much in this one because we didn't go into specific games. This was more about a system. Um, hey. Go check it out. Like I put a lot of time into the set. Eric and I spent a lot of time building the set. We still mess with it every week a little bit to try to make it just right. We still have a few more things we're gonna do. Um, also, like there might be some more changes coming to the set coming up here. We were thinking about better setups and stuff. So we'll. Anyways, it's an ever evolving thing. But the important part is is that the conversation is great and you guys had a good time. So appreciate all your guys' feedback down in the comments as well on how we can make this show better or how much you love the show and what you love about it. Uh, otherwise, thank you guys for tuning in. And, uh, hey, HMK, got to get you on a future episode when we're talking about some Zelda. Oh, definitely, man. You know where to, you know where to find me. Yeah, like, if I didn't already have two heartbeat. guests, I was going to get you. Because we did a, a Zelda 35th and, uh, episode where we had Game Over Jesse and Misclick on. And I was like, ah, oh, we, nice. we just don't have room for another one. Because I would love HMK on that one. But you know what? When the news drops, 35th anniversary news, Breath of the Wild 2. Mm-hmm. If and Do when. <laughs> HMK, I mean, Breath of the Wild 2 news for sure is going to come at some yeah. point. We were told. It will. Eiji and Emma told us we're getting news this year. This sometime. year. Sometime this year. So Hopefully sooner than later. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, hopefully. I mean, hey, maybe Nintendo actually partakes in the digital event at E3. Yeah. That would be sweet. Yeah. But Maybe we'll see. They just do their own thing. And I think they do their own thing too. But, but I, the only reason why I like them saying they're going to participate in E3 is then, 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 oh, then we know when it's going to happen. Instead right. of this whole, right. oh, we're getting a direct this week or this week or this week or this month. Um, yeah. We don't have yeah. to speculate. We know. Um, that, exactly. was, that was the only cool thing about E3 is you just knew on this day mm-hmm. every year, yep. Nintendo's doing big, big, going big. So, all right. Thank you guys. Catch you in the next episode. And HMK, you know what? Screw it. I'm probably going to watch your stream while I'm editing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There you go. All right. Peace out, guys.